YouTube family, what's the deal? It's your boy Chris McLean, Clipper Clip World TV, man. Y'all already know how I'm rocking, family. Y'all already know this, man. It's March Madness. I know y'all got y'all bets in. Don't lose all your bread. But anyway, today, man, take an interesting deep dive on the life, the journey, the trials, and the tribulations of Atlanta, Georgia's on East Side Zone 6, to be exact. Stand up, Atlanta, Georgia. We finna jump into the interesting life of that boy Ola Runt, man. Yeah, sir, man. Y'all make sure y'all jump in that comment section right now and say free Ola Runt, bro. He was one of the ones, man. He kind of tricked himself off the streets too, man. Jump in that comment section and say free Ola Runt, man. We finna take an interesting deep dive into his life today, man. So y'all already know what y'all can do. Sit back, get your doobie, kick back like we finna watch a movie, man. This is where Chris Big Clean Cliff Dog of Cliff World TV. We finna get straight into it. Ola Run, or shall we call him by his real name, Jerry Jalen Jackson Jr. That's four J's. Your name, your rap name should have been four J. Anyways, born in July 1996. Now the young Jerry will be born in the city of Atlanta, Georgia, East Side Zone Six, to be exact. Now it's no wonder why Gucci Mane took a keen liking to the young Atlanta native. And not only that, YouTube family, if you ask me, these guys look dang near identical. Now, to Ola Run, he came from a long family of hustlers and gangsters, and his granddad was always in and out of prison, while his dad was a natural-born hustler. Now, Ola Run recalls him never seeing his father with a job. By the age of nine years old, he was pretty much aware of the way that his father was making money. Now, although he grew up in the ghetto, his mother actually had conservative values. Now, she was pretty strict about his education. So although at times the young man would occasionally get in trouble in class, it would be nothing too serious. But in high school, Ola Run would be arrested at the age of 16 years old for breaking into vehicles. And while he was incarcerated, Ola would be arraigned on other charges like armed robbery, grand theft auto, and possession of a firearm. And Ola Run would spend the next five years of his life behind bars. When it actually started to become clear, like you were really getting now kicked went, out of school I, I, and shit. I, I went to jail in high school. Really? What age? Sixteen. Sixteen for what? Like, I got locked up for uh, breaking in cars. Then, when I was locked up for that, then they put other charges on me, and I never got out. What were the other charges? Like armed robberies and stuff. Was it true, or was it just stuff that they suspected you of, or did they have any evidence? It was just really a lot of stuff going on, and I was just like caught up in it. Like, I just got caught up. And like young nigga at the wrong place, wrong time, like doing doing like you know what I'm saying? This shit just I did like five years after this shit got out. And now I'm here now. Like starting in high school, you did five years. So yeah. how old are you right now? I'm twenty I just turned twenty four like three days ago, four days ago. Okay. On the tenth, July the tenth. And you got five years for just breaking into cars and stuff. Was that kind of the, some of the first like crimes that you were realistically committing when you were young? Yeah, like, yo. Just an easy like, way to get some money because you hadn't necessarily yeah, got super deep like into different cars shit. and just doing shit like just fast cash shit. You mm. know what I'm saying? Like, hitting licks. Me and my partner, we call them licks. Like, we just, we just hit licks for fun. You know what I'm saying? Like, every day. Right. Now, although he was incarcerated, oftentimes he would tell everybody in the jailhouse that was with him that as soon as his feet touched the pavement of the free world, he was gonna start rapping. Caused a lot of people to start telling jokes because they truly did not believe in the young Nigerian boy. Now his real partners, his player partners from back home that was locked up with him, they knew Ola always had it in him to actually start a rap career. He was just always distracted with the streets. Let me forget to mention, Ola Runt is a certified two pistols Sex Money Murder member. Ola Run is a certified sex money murder blood from Atlanta, Georgia. While serving time, he learned how to be militant. He developed a military state of mind. In that for his formative years, the years where a child is developing into a young man, he spent those years behind bars. That things? Like, I really never, like, seen myself, like, just, you know what I'm saying, like, going with this shit like until I got out and I, I I put my mind on this shit like that's what I'm gonna do I used to tell everybody in jail like when I get out from the rap like mm. you tell everybody you tell everybody though like I get out bro I'm gonna be on TV with this shit like, 
folks used to be like, some folks didn't believe me, but a lot, a lot of my real boy, like, they really believe me, like, that boy, they, they'll see me right now, they'll DM me or shit, like, but you said you gonna do that shit, boy. Right. But you said you gonna do that shit, but you really did. Now, upon release, Oli Run tried to fly straight, he tried to straighten up and fly right, and his mom would encourage him to get a warehouse job, but unfortunately for the young man, he just couldn't find himself getting the hang of the warehouse job, so he quit. Now, after quitting the job, Oli Run would fall back into the lifestyle of crime once released, but he'll also go full speed ahead with the rap game. His father, as I stated before, was heavy in the streets with a lot of pull, but it would be done ace of rap a lot records that'll take Ola Run to his first official studio session and then later. Well, let me see. So try to sign. Okay. He caught me on FaceTime like with him, like, you know what I'm saying? We we talk, you know what I'm saying? Uh then Twenty One Savage tried to sign me. Um, he had offered me some little money, like, but it wasn't really it wasn't really enough for me. Uh -huh. Uh, then let me see who else. Then got down. I I DM little baby like, but come get me. You feel me? Like, but come get me. Like, so he DM me back like, he, he was gonna see what's up. You know what I'm saying? Like, he fucking with me. He fucking. He definitely fucking with me. But he gonna he gonna see what's up. Like that shit. Uh -huh. And got down. That was it. Now, there was a whole lot of news articles and speculation as to who Ola Run officially signed to. Now, according to Hip Hop DX in 2020, they actually published an article saying that Ola Run actually signed to Atlanta legend Gucci Mane's 1017 Records. Now, at the beginning of his rap career, less than a year after this article was printed, up and coming Atlanta rapper Ola Run had found himself the ultimate hometown co-sign on 1017 Gucci Mane's records. He became Atlanta's first artist to officially sign to Gucci Mane's imprint. Now, that was the speculation. The speculation was that Ola Runt was signed to 1017. We all seen him with the 1017 chain. We seen him in the Feel Like Goo Wop video with Gucci Mane. So we all felt like he was 1017. Now, according to other articles, he never actually officially signed to 1017. August 21st, 2020, published by Hip Hop DX. This is the same people who published the false narrative. Now, since his release from prison in 2016, Gucci Mane has had a hard time working and reviving his trouble label 1017. The latest incarnation of the Atlanta imprint had been getting off to a solid start with a brand new lineup of young and hungry artists. LaFleur's latest compilation release, Gucci Mane Presents, So I See Summer, Showcases the new talent that Goo Wap had taken under his wing. Ola Runt, who was announced as one of the newest signees to the label in March, is featured on the song Lifers. The only appearance that Ola Runt made on that album, oddly enough. Now, Ola Runt was nowhere to be found in the official music video for Lifers. Now, this, of course, would cause speculation over the internet. During his conversation with Hip Hop DX, the up and coming Atlanta rapper shed light on his situation with Gucci Mane and LaFleur in 1017, citing he never even signed a contract with the Atlanta legend. He said, I ain't talked to him on the phone since the tape drop. Ola Run told Hip Hop DX over the phone that he didn't know what was going on over there with the 1017 imprint. The Atlanta native's connection to Gucci Mane's 1017 records began earlier 2020 when a manager from the label reached out to Ola Run. The manager wanted to sign him to the label and those conversations led to Ola Run sending music over to Gucci Mane. Ola Run says Gucci was gonna give him a million dollars and sent him a 1017 chain before they even met. So basically he had blind faith in Ola Run. He really didn't know his situation. And as he stated before, Ola Run had signed a deal previous to the 1017 discussions. Now he said Gucci Mane sent him the chain and he posted the chain on his Instagram, but he never really signed the deal. Ola Run revealed that now. Gucci Mane wanted to give off the impression to the major labels that he had signed him when in factual that wasn't the true story behind the real situation at all. Now Ola Run would say that Gucci Mane was still his boy and he still partners with him but he wasn't signed to him. Now, when he was asked about the absence from the Lifers music video, 
Ola Run was just as clueless as everyone else, wondering why he wasn't there. Because of his absence, Ola Run told Hip Hop DX he's not a fan of the collaboration tape either. He says, I quote, Gucci Mane sent the song over to me, to the computer, and I just put a verse on that, and he put the shit out. It was great. I fucked with it at first, but then he shot the music video without me, so I really don't fuck with it no more. End quote. Now, despite the confusion between the two sides, Ola reiterates that he only has one worry and doesn't sweat anything that he can't control. Now, he says that he only worry about himself, and he really don't give a fuck that much to like anything else and explain about anything else. And he said, you know, niggas know what's up with him. Now, aside from the Hip Hop DX article that was published stating that Ola Runt was never signed to 1017 Records, there was a lot of drama going on in the streets of Atlanta, Georgia, behind Ola Runt having a 1017 cosign. And his scrutiny would come from none other than Duct Tape Entertainment's own big dog, Big Bank DTE. And I ain't talking about the Big Bank DTE to be, they got the white teeth now. I'm talking about the one with the gold teeth, nigga. You know, it was a whole different type of vibe. He getting some money now. I'm talking about gold teeth, Big Bank DTE, man. Yeah, he got into it with him. So apparently, allegedly, and reportedly, Big Bank and Ola Runt was behind the scenes with some type of dealings. Maybe they was going to, you know, work out with the record label. Maybe he was going to sign Ola Runt to DTE. And then Ola Runt decided to go ahead and go with Gucci Mane. Now, Big Bank, DTE, and Gucci Mane, LaFleur are partners from back in the day. So it kind of caused a little rift between the two partners. Now, I'm going to go ahead and play the back and forth between Ola Runt and Big Bank, DTE, when it comes down to the situation with him signing or allegedly signing the 1017 records. I'm going to go ahead and play that clip. But I understand that it's a long back and forth. And make sure y'all like, comment, and subscribe to the video, man. Make sure y'all like, comment, and subscribe to the video. Y'all never hear me say that. Y'all don't never hear me say that, bro. Make sure y'all like, comment, and subscribe. You want them niggas know how I be and you will fuck with <laughs> Y'all looking at them niggas like, bro. <laughs> did y'all just not just see the man say, to, what the hell? Like, that's some bitch shit. If I start seeing little shit, niggas saying, I eat the future, Mike Will. I put all these folks, Meat Meal. Nigga, these is facts. You can ask these folks. I got the receipts. Bro, fuck with these niggas, because I can't sign on nigga out my hood, because I just know how niggas is. I tried with the little bitch ass nigga, uh, Don Ace. That nigga bitch too. Ugly ass nigga, just one it. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Nigga, what a me, because he did. Nigga, I put Savage on his song. We gave Savage 20,000 on that song. Ugly ass nigga, just one it. What I thought to do, bro? And why I said I wasn't doing that no more. So when I came about, it was like, shit, I'm going to help them nigga get them some money. I'm going to try to turn them on to everybody else. I just ain't going to be involved in it. Putting the nigga on my page. Nigga, I got receipts for this shit, bro. And they all in my shit. Love you, OG. Love you, uncle. You really. But like, two, three months later, you put out a dish record. Cause Gucci gave you a 10 17 change. Gucci ain't fuck with that nigga either. For real. I better look at this shit. I know. Gucci ain't fuck with that nigga. Gucci just know what he gotta do, man. You see, you got a little Fuji Auto all them little niggas doing. Them niggas gotta watch it. Them nigga ain't got them nigga ain't show no money, man. Them nigga ain't got no money. Gucci ain't gave that nigga shit. He's already locked in about three, four contracts. I know this shit. I ain't a bitch. Ooh, and they shit. say whatever they want to say, do whatever they want to do, however they want to do it. I'm going to keep talking about it to the world. No, these niggas some bitches. Straight up. That boy say for the Ja Rule, nigga. Yeah, a nigga bitch. Or make them niggas do some shit like they want to push up and get killed. What I want them niggas to be about? mad if they could ever be in their life. I want these niggas to be super mad. Because like, they already hate I want y'all niggas to be the maddest you ever been in life. Like, I'm mad. I'm finna go where he at. Bitch ass nigga. It'll always be a nigga you show the most love to, too, bro. It was a couple more young niggas back there that I want to fuck with that I could have fucked with. You know what I'm saying? But it was just like shit. That nigga was hard to me. You know what I'm saying? That nigga was hard to me, bro. I, I thought the nigga was hard. Like, I'm trying to help the nigga. I wasn't nobody even never knew this pussy ass nigga. We'd have left the nigga ass on ignore. Alex started posting this nigga shit. I started posting this nigga shit. Then he come to dick robbers. All the pussy niggas and shit. And they, and you know, they get around the nigga start telling their stories from how bankers fuck nigga. Now, a lot of these niggas I have been fucked niggas on, stripping these niggas, whipping their head, 
setting them up and all kind of shit. So he get around the bank <laughs> haters. Like, I'm being real, fucking these niggas hoes, all that. Taking these niggas hoes. Like, taking these niggas hoes. I, I know, I hope Bootyhead ain't got nothing to do with it, but he on Front Street, so everybody got something to do with it. Took Bootyhead, main bitch, and made on my side. Forever. No disrespect to her, but she just know he's a bitch. Like, man, come on, I know you niggas. I don't give a fuck who get mad about what. Y'all niggas had a chance to tell these niggas, ain't no shoot no video of this, all this, so I don't give a fuck about none of that shit. Because I know what y'all niggas gonna do and what y'all niggas ain't gonna do. All that ugly looking ugly shit, niggas shooting at cars in the hood. Anybody can do that. We all know what cuts to run through. You ain't never went outside the hood and did shit. All them stories, ain't nobody's involved with them, no nothing. Y'all niggas are pussies. I don't give a fuck how it go. The phone line, I'm flying. You know you gotta do what you gotta do, right? I ain't gotta do shit. I'm just talking about it. I ain't gotta do nothing. I don't feel threatened. This shit is a joke. That's why we on the internet. This shit, <laughs> not yet. This shit is a joke to me, bro. First, I was heartbroken. Like, that type of way. Like, nigga broke my heart. Like, you could have did anything but goddamn diss a nigga on a song. Puss ass. Now, after unleashing a verbal assault on Ola Run, Big Bang DTE would also proceed to say that Ola Run's father wasn't good in the streets, man, saying that he had a snitch jacket on him. And not only that, Big Bang DTE would also put on blast that he was the one that even provided the coolest sweater for Ola Run's father to wear at one of Ola Run's graduations, man. I ain't no way in hell on wearing another man coolest sweater. I just can't do it. Not to my son's graduate. Come on. That's like wearing, that's the equivalent of wearing those birthday Burberry shirts and then letting your homie wear it out to the club, bro. That's just crazy, bro. And not only that, Big Bang DTE said the Coogee sweater was woe out lousy. It looked like one of the last Coogee sweaters that Biggie stretched out, man. He said it was lousy. The neck was droopy. The neckline, it was sleepy. He said that it was baggy on him. I'm like, bro, why is you exposing all of this, bro? About the man father? Y'all going too far. Atlanta, I'm going to ask y'all again, what is going on in Atlanta, bro? Now, of course, this will cause Ola Run to respond himself. Now, at first, it started off light. It started off featherweight like, you know what I mean? Uh, I really don't even understand how the beef even started because here is a clip of Big Bank DTE practically, basically co-signing Ola Runt, man, in the interview. I'm going to run that real quick. Mm -hmm. Who's some of the rappers um, maybe outside of your crew in Atlanta that you would want the world to pay attention to that you think might be next to represent the city? Uh, most definitely Ola Runt. He got my neighborhood. Going hard, yeah. Ola, he going nuts right now. Uh, Marlo, you know what I'm saying? Marlo, I like Marlo. Ola Run would also take to Instagram and make a post saying that Big Bank was his biggest fan. Now, you could hear Big Bank in the background practically cheering Ola Run. Oh, man, you could damn near probably even hear him clapping ass, man. Pause, but yeah, man, he had his pom-poms out and he was really cheering the man also. For you to be talking bad about somebody that you was acting like this with, bro, it's kind of crazy to me because you was definitely acting like you had your pom-poms in your hand. All I know is that after a series of these back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, Ola Run finally go ahead and cut the collar off and just went full fledged dog on them. The news ain't even front, Edward, man. Hey, hey, and problem child, your daddy name Big O. Big O is a preacher. Y'all, Big O is a preacher, man, man. Big O is a preacher and he's a chef. He cook food, no dope. Y'all, 
My father cooked dope. Y'all you know I mean? your father cooked food, nigga. You talking about? And then listen, big bank stuff fucking your mama when she was like 14. And he was like in his 20s. So that shit like you his stepchild. You feel me? Oh, that's why he feel like Yeah, that's that why he feel like that, man. Oh, you big bank farm child. <laughs> <laughs> you big bank war daddy. Cause nigga know he is a hoe. These niggas wake up every morning and hate on us. I love it though. That shit make her popular. Y'all don't even know. Y'all niggas just fucking with her, man. These niggas really hoes. Now, in that phone call, Ola Runt was on the other line with Eastside Jody, and Eastside Jody had a whole lot to say about Big Bang DTE as well. One thing about the streets, whatever is in the streets is supposed to stay in the streets. And I would expect for y'all hoe ass niggas to know that, but y'all got these fake ass OGs who doing this same gay ass internet shit with y'all, so y'all think that shit cool. All that goddamn screaming and yelling and going on live and getting in your feelings, calling niggas out. All that shit, some whole shit, man. All that fake ass gangster shit y'all niggas be doing online, don't scare nobody, man. That shit really be dry snitching for the gangster shit that's gonna happen to y'all ass soft line. So to all the real niggas in the streets, man, don't let these whole ass niggas play y'all niggas out the streets, man. Cause these niggas on that internet shit the other niggas on that real shit ain't no in between. You either internet thug or you're a real thug. Which one is it? Twitter fang ass niggas. Now y'all know Big Bang wasn't just gonna let that slide, man. Y'all know Big Bang wasn't gonna let that slide. And I'm surprised that all of this kerfuffle started over Ola Run. Why so much kerfuffle over Ola Run? Now Ola Run is hard. That's one of the many, that's one of the Atlanta artists that I actually like and stamp. So free Ola Run, man. But y'all know Big Bang wasn't gonna let that slide at all, man. And I'm gonna play the clip. Now shit, playing the shit. You the one really pissed me off. I wasn't even stunning that Ola bitch ass nigga. I know he a straight bitch. But you a type of bitch ass nigga that don't want duct tape sweatshirts and been all on a nigga dick. Hold on, let me play this fuck nigga. Let me play this fuck nigga. Look at this nigga. Y'all read this shit, man. You, hey, you got any small t-shirts? I need a couple, OG. Nah, ain't on any. Okay, bet. I can get some. I can get some off in the hood too. Okay, it's love, infinity. Infinity, infinity. You know what I'm saying? It's love. It's supposed to be love. Look at all this shit. This is October 17th. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. I heard the nigga got into a car wreck. Me hear him. You good? Yeah, badass car wreck, though. All right, but that's in the skies, nigga. Get the bag, because I know you a broke-ass, puss-ass nigga. Okay, then you hit me back with Mary Christmas. Mary Crimmel? Man, I, th I thought I'm a bitch. Why the hell you tell me Mary Crimmel? Okay, now, okay. All right, we're going to go on, on down. Infinity, eight ball. You all this shit. You a pussy, nigga. Okay, what does this say? With the real camera crew. Nigga, get out my dick, bitch ass nigga. Hit me up, big mob, big mob. I'll say you big mob now. Okay, cool down on my phone, I'm on the hungry fuck, fuck it. Call me. Now the Big Bang DTE altercations or riffs or beefs wouldn't be the only beefs that Ola Wright would be involved in. In fact, he would be involved in quite a few. So let's go ahead and start off with the one that kind of threw me for one. Like, why is you beefing with Lil' Keed and Lil' Gotti? Yeah, man, Olaf Runt was beefing with Lil' Kid and Lil' Got It. Now, I don't even know where this beef started over. It was real strange to me. Real, real strange to me, man. But they had a back and forth, and Olaf Runt snapped on him, called him out for the fade. We just gonna go ahead and run it. <laughs> yeah, that what y'all do? On oh, God. Y'all, everybody, everybody come in and say, fuck 10 Oh, Dude, you a bitch you ain't with, Michael. You a bitch if you ain't with me, nigga. Get your bitch ass on, man. Oh, ass nigga. Fuck 1017, yeah. nigga. Fuck all I run. Nigga, fuck 1017 and Guwak. And fuck 1017 Hitchman. I'm slime, nigga. Fuck 1017 Hitchman. Y'all need to talk about next. Hey, y'all know Hitchman stand for um Du Bois, right? Like um Crash Dummies. Y'all look it up. <laughs> Stupid. Stupid ass nigga. Y'all know that's the thing. Fuck 1017, nigga. Hey, on game. Like I don't get no fuck. Yeah. On why I sell the street one. No, not, not, no, not, yeah. Hey, hey, hold on, hold on. My brother just went up. My hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. My brother just went up. What you got on you, uh, Lil' James? Hey, come on, man. Hey, Jones, bro, what's this shit? What you got on you, Lil' James? Over oh, 10, 17, hey, thousand, right? That old, that, that old where Ola Runt signed for, he signed for a 1017 chain. Somebody was getting a million dollars. We ain't seen no money yet. <laughs> we ain't seen no money yet. 
Yeah, Key, tell them stop arguing with these niggas. I know, I know why you mad though. I ain't put you on that feel like goo watch. I, don't, I never, I, I, I never told y'all put you on that. So you tried to put yourself on my shit. And your verbal ass. <laughs> you trying to put yourself on my shit, man. And your verbal ass. Let me add that bitch ass nigga. Niggas stuck in the end. Your verbal ass. Y'all don't remember he did it with Soulja Boy though? He a real clout chaser like that. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody not doing that gay ass shit. They gonna see one of them at Black and Boy beat the fuck out their ass. <laughs> oh God, boy. Mm -hmm. You don't need one of them niggas who won't even be with them who just slide and get their ass beat. Yeah. Come on, man. We ain't doing all that Instagram or shit. That nigga know what's going on. Yeah, like in real life. I know your big brother who you look up to. Yeah. <laughs> 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 hey, that's your big brother. I know him. Your big brother who you look up to. Man, real fan though, y'all. When I first met this man, was at OOK video shoot. This man told me to get in his video. Like, bro, come get in my video. I was with my boy Juice. He was in Cutler, he pulled to the circle, me. Pulled to the circle, nigga made me get in his video, ain't even know that, man. Fuck out here, where you get your hair from? I'm trying to buy my baby mama some bundles. Stick by me, you know about me personally, my town. My town. I ain't never heard of you. Doing nothing gangsta. Man, free little Kelly, free little slime by Kelly, man. Y'all really Kelly, young nigga, real shit. Free little dead. Yeah, free little rod. How you grow the balls to even come at my game, though, twin? Like, <laughs> you know you ain't even no nigga built like that. Yeah, oh, man. You know you just have a biggie fan, man. Come on, man. Yeah. When we was in Crucial, you walked all the way around the club to dap us up. Why ain't he mad at him? Now go to the bus, uh, baby, do he see me? Oh, but who the fuck did he try to pick me up that mask like he took the mask off? He's still baby. Oh, twin, where the hell you in? Still able to just make it. Oh, third world. Just, man, you get the fuck out my goddamn face. Still able to just sold me a stick for two hundred for two hundred and fifty dollars. Look at that nigga, man. You sold me a stick for two hundred and fifty dollars, bro. But I just talked to the big homie, bro. Yeah, the other day he said it wasn't no You smoke, sold bro. me a stick for two hundred and fifty dollars, nigga. You was on your dick, and you, you broke in here, and you calling me. Oh, like, buy this stick for me, nigga. You know how I bought it. Y'all know how I bought it. Yeah, you about. Got a <laughs> big had to drop on you since that first vacation. Stop playing, boy. <laughs> Real shit. You just scream slime now you on. You a uh, little Montana, bro. You know deep down in your heart, you don't, you don't need you want to do that. I fuck Montana, man. Montana yeah. just bring us some more guns like you been doing. Yeah, stop acting gangster. Yeah, it's like Perry still high. Hey, shit, man, that shit right over there hey, by baby. Cleveland. Hey, e point. Baby. Stick baby, tell the guy you just was stealing his gun and bring them to me. Come on, stick baby. You just stealing your brother's gun, selling them to San Thomas. And me. Stop playing, man. You just down on your dick. All that fake sight, that shit, that shit don't scare me, <laughs> man. All that fake All that loud ass shit. Uh, uh, Come on, man. What you got to get down? <laughs> Tony on that? Man, Tony ain't died yet, bitch ass nigga. I ain't never seen him ass shit like that. Why that loud amplified ass shit, man? You forgot, I've been knowing you for years, my channel. Like, I really know you, my channel. Like, <laughs> You ain't that, come on, you know me personally. Like, <laughs> Bro, them niggas ain't even went to no schools in Atlanta. Man, them niggas fighting, man. Wild and no jumper. Adam 22, of course, would do his job as an investigative journalistic reporter. Y'all know Adam damn near like Vladim. Might as well call him Vladim 22, man. So you know he had to ask Ola right about the situation. I watched this long ass Instagram live with you and some tension popping up with a uh, got it. Where, where did that come from? I don't know. I think he just mad. He probably got mad. I ain't put him on the remix so to feel like go up. He wanted to be on that? He wanted to be on that. Mm. That really why he got mad, because he was just like, I don't know, when I met him, he, when, I, when I first met him, I ain't even know him. He, he, he knew me like, like I, knew, I knew he was, because he rapped. Like, you know what I'm saying? I knew he ain't like this little guy, but I ain't expecting him to be like, 
hey, Ola, come get in my video. You feel me? Right. I ain't know him. Like, I went and got in their video. Like, he just got mad. Like, he just posted on Instagram for Ola. Damn, he posted that? I don't know. Like, they, 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 they were showing me. And they, uh, he would take it down. Like, I don't know. That's Post crazy. Like, now, after falling out with Got It and parting ways with Gucci Mane in this 1017 imprint, having riffs with Big Bang DTE, you would think that he can only go up from there, but he started to experience what some may call bad luck. Now, there's a viral video of Ola Runt being arrested, and the ops is making fun of him, man, because it appears that he's crying while he's on the concrete, so I'm going to go ahead and play that. Runt down bad, boy. Oh shit, damn, he got caught with the fire. Jit got caught with the fire, man. They say he caught Shadow with the fire, man. He say he protecting his life, man. They say they out on the head, boy. They say, man, go on take me to jail, boy. They caught that boy with the fire. You can bond out. I don't know why the nigga crying like that, though, dog. You straight, bro. Nigga, boy, they got that boy, but they got that boy all the runt bound up out there, bitch, boy. 1017 Shadow. What goo off at, man? They got all the runt down. Run down bad, boy. And in case you didn't think things could get any worse for Oli Run, they definitely would. October 29, 2020. The FBI announces results of Operation Phoenix. Atlanta FBI agent in charge Chris Hacker, interim Atlanta Police Chief Rodney Bryant, and U.S. Attorney B.J. Pack announced that 12 of Atlanta's most violent offenders are being charged as a result of Operation Phoenix a sustained and coordinated law enforcement initiative to fight crime across the city of Atlanta, Georgia. Now, Operation Phoenix began August 18th, 2020 in an effort to identify, investigate, and prosecute those individuals deemed to be the most dangerous to the citizens of the city of Atlanta. Federal law enforcement agencies worked in conjunction with local, state, and law enforcement officials to identify offenders. Wayne Christopher Alfred, 23, was in custody at the time for federal charges. Ronald Patrick Banks, 41, possession of a firearm by a convicted felon. Kenneth Xavier Copeland, age 29, was in custody at the time for pending federal charges. Kareem DeAndre Durham was 26 at the time for possession of a firearm by a convicted felon. Jaree Jalen Jackson, a.k.a. Ola Runt, 24, at the time for possession of a firearm by a convicted felon. Marvell LeVette Jackson, 35 years old at the time, was in state custody for pending federal charges. Tanquarius Mender, 23 at the time of arrest, was in state custody pending federal charges. Ladarius Broughton, 29 at the time, possession of a firearm by a convicted felon. Demario Lee, 38 at the time, was in custody for federal charges. Ricardo Harrow was 19 at the time, was in custody for a simple battery against a police officer. Now, under federal law, it is illegal to possess a firearm. And if you fall in one of the nine prohibited categories, including being a felon, illegal alien, or unlawful user of a controlled substance. Further, it is unlawful to possess a firearm in furtherance of a drug trafficking offense or a violent crime. It is also illegal to purchase or even attempt to illegally purchase firearms if the buyer is prohibited from doing so. So yeah, man, when he got caught with that fire at the mall, he got picked up by them feds in Operation Phoenix. Now, I think I briefed over the fact that the henchmen in the Homicide Gang is beefing, which would be Playboy Cardi's crew, and that'd be Ola Runt's crew, okay? Now, they got plenty of videos on YouTube about these type of things. Plenty, plenty, plenty. So we're not gonna go deep into the henchmen in the Homicide Gang beast, but it is some interesting things that has happened when it comes down to that beef. Now, I have an article here. Since Ola Runt has been in federal custody, make sure y'all jump in that comment section and say, free Ola Runt, man. The boy deserve a chance, man. He very, very talented now. I found a strange, strange article, YouTube family, man. It, it's, it's just crazy. Now, now, allegedly, one of the henchmen, one of the members of Ola Runt's gang, one of his 
one of his guys, man, one of his henchmen, a 5L member, while incarcerated in Fulton County, a 5L member would dig a tunnel through a jail wall, bro, in order to attack a person responsible for the death of Ola Runt's brother. I am not lying. I'm about to read the full article for you right now. A Fulton County jail inmate dug a tunnel through a wall, but he was not trying to escape. WSB TV News reports May 21st, 2023. Atlanta, the Fulton County Sheriff's Office released the new details about an attack by a Fulton County jail inmate on another inmate that Wednesday. Now, according to officials, Kavion Thomas dug a hole through a shower wall made of concrete and metal to reach a nearby cell block in order to stab a fellow inmate, D. Rodney Russell. Russell sustained a non-life-threatening injury to his upper body before being taken off to a medical unit. For so wait a second. He actually succeeded? Boy, free Ola Rant right now. He His henchman is not playing no games at all. Now, deputies at the time did not specify what Thomas and Russell were being charged with before the attack. Now, after Thomas' attack on Russell, Deputies at the jail searched both cell blocks where they found several weapons, including shanks made from parts of depleted building and fractures. Now, deputies told Channel 2 Action News investigative reporter Mike Wynn that they'd also found seven items of contraband inside of the cell, including at least five weapons. The interim Fulton County Jail Commander Curtis Clark said that Rice Street's facility has very dangerous conditions, man, and it presents a constant challenge for them to eliminate things like that and having inmates have access to such weapons. Now, the interim Fulton County Jail Commander Curtis Clark said that the jail has clearly outlived its useful life and that the reality of it, that these inmates will literally find anything in order to turn it and use it as a weapon. Developments about an attack at the Fulton County Jail. Deputies charge an inmate accused of digging his way through concrete so he could stab another inmate. Authorities say Kavian Thomas stabbed De Rodney Russell in his upper body multiple times on Wednesday. Now this is the hole you're about to see right here. Thomas allegedly dug through the shower wall that led to Russell's cell. The stabbing led to a shakedown in the jail and it turned up seven items of contraband and five weapons. Fulton County jail commander indicated this stuff on the table was discovered in a shakedown of two side-by-side -side cell blocks after a stabbing. But the big discovery literally was the hole in the wall that made the stabbing possible. A homemade hole in the wall. This piece of sheet metal right here. Somebody's probably going to try to make a shank out of that if it's not fixed, right? No doubt. This right here. They make kiosks. All of this is stuff that could be used to make weapons. Absolutely. And it presents a constant challenge for us to el eliminate things like this from access to the inmates. These things that tunnel symptoms of an aging, dangerous jail. Absolutely not. This jail is clearly out there for useful life, and our daily job is to make it as safe as we possibly can, not only for staff, but for the inmates as well. For these kind of issues, you lose sleep about the safety of your people and your inmates. Mark. I have lost so much sleep since being assigned uh, to run this location or this facility. It's, it's, it's really, it's difficult to talk about. Interrupt Jail Commander Clark indicated manpower is important here too, that like most police departments, jails, and sheriff's offices in Georgia, the Fulton County Jail has staffing challenges, uh, which the sheriff's office is addressing with hiring bonuses, uh, relocation stipends and pay raises but with optimal staffing he thinks officers could have discovered that hole in the wall before it was finished and perhaps prevented the fashioning of the weapons discovered mark winning channel to action news now since being incarcerated ola runt has put in motions through the court in order to be seen for mental illnesses and see if he was competent enough to stand trial i'm going to read a few of those papers off i'm not going to read everything because it's kind of getting long-winded at this point on august 11 2020 a grand jury seated in the district returned a single court indictment against mr jackson charging him with unlawful possession of a firearm by a convicted felon 
in violation of 18 U.S.C. 922G and 924 on October 14, 2020, Magistrate Judge Christopher C. Bly arraigned Mr. Jackson and assigned the case to the Magistrate Judge Justin S. for pretrial purposes. Now, on October the 16th, 2020, counsel for Mr. Jackson moved for a pretrial psychological evaluation of Mr. Jackson. Mr. Jackson was thereafter transferred to a federal detention center in Miami, Florida for an evaluation, and it would be at the FDC Miami correctional facility that Dr. Fieldman evaluated that Ola Runt was definitely competent to stand trial February to April of 2021. Now, get this YouTube family, Ola Runt is in the same prison or was at the time in the same prison as Glock 9 and Kodak Black artist Psycho Bob and he was also when they were Fujiano, man. And uh, yeah, man, they say Ola Runt had put a case and tried to say that Glock 9 was snitching. I ain't finna really get too deep into that. They got a video on that already, man. But yeah, that's what's really going on with that boy Ola Run, man. Shout out to Atlanta. Y'all jump in the comment section, man, and go ahead and say free that boy Ola Run, man. Y'all let me know who y'all want to hear next, man. The boy Crispy Clean Cliff, man. The Cliff Real TV. Yeah, I'm gone. YouTube family. I'm going to need y'all to tap in with my girl here by Honey Man. She is CEO, loctician, beautician, all-around miracle worker out of Spokane, Washington. But if that bag is right, she will fly to you. Now, I'm telling y'all, I have seen her turn some solid tools into dimes. Some solid tools into dimes. Some weight at the back of the line, so you ain't got to wait in line. I said, man, if you need your retwist, if you need your edges laid, if you don't want to go outside looking played, man, because I'm telling y'all, some of y'all, I seen y'all out there last weekend, and you was looking a little crushed. And she do kids here, too. And I seen some of y'all kids' pictures, man. And, hey, man, on picture day, they here was nappy. So if y'all didn't have nobody to do it, I'm telling y'all, I'm putting y'all down right now. Here by honey. Your booking done right now. You can't let your appearance be the interference. Don't let your appearance be the interference, I'm telling you. Don't try to lay your edges yourself. It ain't going to work. Hair by Honey. She is a professional. She does this for a living. Get your book, YouTube family. I'm going to need y'all to tap in with my boy, Mimosa, man, and mobbing with Mimosa and his podcast. Look, if you're in the greater Northwest area and you're trying to get exposure, man, and you know you deserve that spotlight and your music really hidden, mobbing with Mimosa is the place to go. I'm telling y'all, man. He running the multimedia blog site, and he'll pull up for the interview. He's been seen on camera with Big Sad 1900 collaborator Lil Booth out in Tacoma. And that interview went yay yay. He did an interview with XD Stacks, FTFKT, and man, he even got me and BBDL on the interview, man. Listen, if you in the greater Northwest area and you want some exposure, I'm telling you. Vancouver, Tequila, Tacoma, Seattle. Kennewick, Royal Orange, Renton, Belltown. Tap in with Mobby with Mimosa, man. He on the rise. I'm letting y'all know, man. He one of my guys. I'm putting a stamp on it. Look out for Mobby with Mimosa podcast and make sure y'all subscribe to the channel. Listen, make sure y'all subscribe to the channel. Don't inbox me any more links. If you in the greater Northwest area and you rap and you make music, I don't want to see no more links. Don't inbox me any more links. I need to see you on Mobbing with Mimosa's podcast. Then I'll pay attention. YouTube family, I'm going to need y'all to check out my boy, Ari Young, man, coming out of California. He a streamer, he's a YouTuber, and he's an artist. Let's just say he's multi-talented. I mean, hey, the boy could be the next Kaisenet. Twitch, holla at my boy, send him a bag. To everybody that be on Twitch, even Discord. Man, y'all need to holler at my boy, Ari Young, man. This the wave of the future. Live streamers are creating a new millionaires. And I got faith in my boy, Ari Young. I mean, he was smart enough to get the promo. Y'all make sure y'all tap into his show, Stay Cloudy. Subscribe to him on Twitch, Ari Young. Man, look, he gaming, he doing music, he live streaming, blunt rolling contest, Mario Kart, you name it. Like I told y'all, this the wave of the future, man. Now let's jump into the video y'all been waiting for. Hey. 
I'm pippin' like I'm done one I'ma stop at the store, sell me a onion Go and get some backwoods in the back of Funyun Let a nigga play me sweet and he gon' meet the honey bun I ain't ride with it unless he got a hundred round drum Hit that nigga with the drink, he gon' butt up out I'm bomb Hit it with the daddy stroke, I got the little baby sprung Gotta keep that thing on you coming from where I'm from Gotta keep that thing on you when you coming from the 